Watch this. More than just legislation was voted down today at the Idaho State House. Believing Republican leadership was showing some cracks, at least one was shown the door. Today. It's Heather Scott TV Day. Well, if a lawmaker wants to talk about cannibalism, you can bet it's going to be put on TV. And also because Representative Heather Scott brought forth a bill based on something she saw on social media. No joke. It's relationships. Jewelry is all about relationships. And this Boise jeweler has made a lot of both in more than five decades in business. But he won't be open much longer to give himself time to polish his personal relationships. Well, it appears we are kind of in the midst of a, well, sort of, Kevin McCarthy moment at the Idaho State House. You remember last fall when the Speaker of the House in Congress was booted from his position in Congress? Well, there's been a similar ousting of leadership in Idaho's House of Representatives. Not the Speaker, but the House Majority Leader. Republican Representative Megan Blanksma was voted out this afternoon just weeks into the session. It's a rare move that we're still trying to put the pieces together of how we got here. And so to kind of figure that out, Joe joins us now to kind of figure out what we do know about where things do stand now. Yeah, and, and uh, to be honest, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we're not privy to yet, so right. we'll continue to chase these things down. But here's what we know today at 5 o'clock. The move today was put into motion on the House floor when a motion was made to have a vote to retain House Speaker Mike Moyle. Okay, so this motion was unexpected, but some sense based on the major arguments going on behind the scenes with how budgets are being set. So maybe somebody didn't trust Moyle anymore. Well, at the end of the vote, Moyle was actually retained as a House Speaker on a vote of 69 to nothing, with one lawmaker absent. House quickly, though, went back into recess, and the majority party, they went into caucus or a private meeting. And we've seen them make that move several times in recent days, having some really long meetings behind closed doors. Nothing out of the ordinary there. But caucus meetings allow lawmakers within their respective parties to essentially debate things like who should be their leadership team. And we found out that in that caucus, the Idaho House Republican Caucus, they voted to get rid of House Majority Leader Representative Megan Blanksma as the majority leader. House Speaker Mike Moyle, as well as the remaining members of the House leadership team, Representative Sage Dixon and Representative Dustin Manwaring, again, they all kept their positions after they fa faced a vote as well. So the vote tallies for all of those behind the scenes votes. Well, we don't know what they are. We don't know who voted for what. We don't know what the margin was because it's not public knowledge. So we're still trying to figure out exactly what that tally was. So what is all of this about? Why did this happen? Again, it comes during a very contentious time in the House. Republicans debating within themselves how budgeting should be done in Idaho. And we talked a lot about the battle in JFAC this week and previously. So of note, Representative Blanksma was the only member of the GOP House leadership team to vote against the maintenance budget that was hotly debated on the floor yesterday. And we talked about this at length. But we did get a statement this evening from Representative Blankma. She says, quote, to say that I am disappointed by today's outcome would be an understatement. However, I respect the process and accept the decision made by my colleagues in the House Republican Caucus. She says that she is proud of the work she has done and will continue to do as to how she became the fall person for what happened with the budgeting process. Blank says, quote, it is our responsibility as elected officials to be vocal and express apprehensions over critical policy that will have major impacts on our state. And tomorrow is a new day that she says she looks forward to getting back to work. And Brian, a Republican lawmaker tells us this evening that they really don't think something like this has happened before. There has been a change of being voted out as that House majority leader, but that happened during an org session several years ago. So yeah. we're in some uncharted territory. And again, uh, we don't exactly know what's going on behind the scenes, but we do know the Republican caucus says that they will be having a new majority leader vote on Monday. So tomorrow's a new day. That vote won't come until Monday, though. So for tomorrow, there will be basically no majority leader on the House side of the State House. But it's going back to that tally, the vote you mentioned. Yeah. I even asked the lawmaker who's in the room kind of what was the consensus, and they were told they wouldn't be told. Like, they, that number was not going to be... Like you couldn't like, get a tally at right, all. at all. So I don't know if it ever will be made public unless other than the three that were running the show back there will let us know. And I can say for a conversation I had, if you're curious about process, they, they physically do ballots into a box. So, again, we're going to keep talking with people at the Statehouse and see if we can get to the bottom of this, but uh, pretty uh, shocking news.
All right, one thing leads to the other over there. All right, thank you, Joe. Okay, so before all of the caucus chaos this afternoon, there's a bit of, uh, well, less than appetizing legislation to deal with in House State Affairs Committee. And in case you didn't know this, Idaho is the only state that specifically outlaws cannibalism. Still the case, nothing's changed there, but there was some concern after those who keep tabs on what's happening at the State House saw cannibalism, just that word, cannibalism on the agenda or the menu, as it were, for today. Why? Well, that's the main question we had before the committee hearing this morning. Afterwards, well, that left us wondering, what are we doing? The committee will now in consideration RS-31078, Representative Scott. In one of the most anticipated moments of the morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Republican Representative Heather Scott District stepped to the podium in the House State Affairs Committee. RS-31078, cannibalism. And I know this seems like a, it's a heavy topic, actually. It might seem kind of gruesome, and it kind of is. Cannibalism is already a crime in Idaho under a chapter titled Mayhem. Any person who willfully ingests the flesh or blood of a human being is guilty of cannibalism. It was passed in 1990 after a rash of unfounded satanic panic investigations in Idaho during the 80s. Representative Scott wants to add a line to that law. Anyone who willfully provides said flesh and blood to another person to ingest without that person's knowledge or consent is also guilty of cannibalism. Okay, so and why is this a worry for an Idaho lawmaker? Well, Representative Scott brought up two reasons. So a few years ago, back in 2019, I heard that Washington State was starting to, to do human composting. And that disturbed me. So I wanted to address this because what I didn't want to see is bags of compost with human bone fragments. Yes, human composting is a thing in several states, including Washington. But the remains aren't being bagged. They're being spread in a forest outside Battleground, Washington, to help it recover from logging. And the other reason you know, Representative Scott family. got during a flight last channels. summer. And I watched a video uh, of um, some food show. All right, chef. Can you tell us the three secret ingredients that might be found in this amazing sausage that you made for us today? The three secret ingredients that might be found in the sausage are fish liver, human flesh, or shark. I, is this, it, are those really the three ingredients? Yeah. And one of the options they told these people that was in the food was human flesh. Or human flesh. God help you, it better be shark. Not okay. No, that's not all right. You know, it's a wonderful renewable protein. Well, well, hey, all right. Yeah, all right. No, Are you sure? Disgusting. No, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to no, go like this no, either. No, that's this really disgusting. Chef, Chef, are you serious? Yeah, of course. I thought, this is going to be normalized at some point. The way our society's going and the direction we're going, um, this is going to be normalized. So Representative Scott based her bill on a video posted to TikTok a month ago. Yes, I'm afraid you're both wrong. It is human flesh. No. About something that wasn't actually real. We're going to stop shooting this right now. We're going to do another show called Fameless. It's Davis Bade's new prank show. <laughs> Thank God. Oh my God. I guess this is what happens when you do your own research. There's a lot of documentation out there. If you just um, Google it, there's a ton of people showing it and how they're doing it. Must have been a short flight since Representative Scott didn't seem to watch the end of that video. I know what you're thinking. You know, Soylent Green is people! Well, Representative Scott said she was wanting to stop human composting from getting into the food supply, which is why she brought this bill forward. So just to reiterate, when it does come to human composting, what's left after 8 to 12 weeks is one cubic yard of compost, which is mostly plant material and very little human DNA left in it. Families can take that cubic yard home or they can donate it, which is then spread around to several spots across Washington, which is what I found out today. But it's not. It is not used for food production. By the way, I did try to ask Representative Scott about this bill at the risk of being blasted on social media. Her response, she'd rather not. House Bill 522 was printed, and we will wait to see when it will get a public hearing. 
All right, meanwhile, back in D.C., the U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments today to determine whether former President Trump can be kept off the presidential ballot in Colorado, a case that could impact several other states who either have already or are considering banning him from the ballot. Justices today appeared skeptical of the Colorado Supreme Court's ruling to remove Trump from the Republican primary ballot in that state on grounds he engaged in insurrection for trying to overturn the 2020 election, which led to the January 6th Capitol attack. You know who happened to be right there as this was all unfolding today? Not on January 6th, but that would be Idaho's very own Secretary of State, Phil McGrain. He's in our nation's capital with other secretaries of state to follow the ballot access case. Uh, a group of secretaries of state filed an amicus brief in the case, trying to really urge the courts to not make this a 50 state solution, saying the secretaries of state at each of the states shouldn't be the ones determining who should be on the ballot, particularly when it comes to for the presidency. So McGrain did not make it into the courtroom today, but he did say he believes we will see Trump on the ballot in all 50 states. State leaders are hoping to have a decision before Super Tuesday on March 5th. Well, today in the 208, we have the 411. Uh, well, we're focusing on the number two, I think, which is what you can use to get back at your ex. Brenda Rodriguez has that and more in today's 411. Today's school was canceled for the Emmett School District because of a threat staff members got before school. At 1 this afternoon, the school district said all the buildings were clear. Sports and events are happening tonight. School is on for tomorrow, and we still don't know what the threat was. Sometimes love stinks. That's why Turd Nerd is putting your ex's name on a bag of poop. You heard that right. It's all for the low price of $5. And Turd Nerd will send you a picture of the bag of poop that you can do well, whatever you want with it. All the money raised goes to the Freedom Bound Hounds who help rescue dogs from kill shelters. And if you think that's weird, how about neutering your ex? Well, for a $52 donation, Bannock Feral Friends in Pocatello will name a feral cat after your ex. Then they will spay or neuter that cat. The final step, posting a picture of the newly fixed and named cat on Facebook for all to see. Don't want to publicly shame your ex? Well, you can still donate to BFF and name a cat for a friend. What a lovely way to celebrate Valentine's Day. And that's your 411 on the 208. I'm Brenda Rodriguez. He's been in business on the Boise bench since the Nixon administration. But unlike Nixon, the owner of Art Smith's Jewelers is calling it a career on his own terms. I look back at more than 50 years of making people happy. Here's what makes us happy. To hear from you, text us. Talk to us about the 208 with a message sent to 208-321-5614. As always, include your name and the hashtag the 208. Short and sweet, we'll give you a good chance to see yours at the end of the show. All right, if you haven't seen it, then you're probably not looking. The iconic Art Smith's jewelry sign on the Boise bench, well, it's about to join the ranks of other Boise's former landmarks. 
The owners of that business, they're calling it a career. They spent five decades at the helm of a business dating back generations. Rings, watches, necklaces, you can find it all there. Their job wasn't just to sell any of it, though. Andrew Bartline shows us they're selling something much more valuable. Typically in place to keep people out, the bars on Art Smith's jewelry are better known for keeping someone in. He's always here, like, seven days a week. Every week. Oh, from the beginning. Because Rick Harvey loves his work. Yeah, yeah. By trade, a jeweler. It's important to have patience. In practice, a matchmaker. Jewelry is all about relationships. So if I can help them with their relationships with each other, then I'm doing something good. Plus these. There's a lot of good <clears throat> to go around. This is resetting a diamond. This fellow is going to get married and she hasn't seen the ring yet. And I know these people real well. Relationships. Uh-oh, the boss is here. You don't ever dream that you'll marry a jeweler. But Connie's dream came true. <laughs> I know. <laughs> a love older than his helm with the business. How many years have been? 53. Oh my goodness. The hour hand isn't moving. It keeps his busy. I'm lucky I don't have arthritis in my hands. At least busy for now. I heard you guys are closing end of the... End of the month. Is that a good thing? Excited for new things? It, it took a long time for me to accept it. Yeah. Out of place, considering it takes him no time to make most decisions. There she is. I'll shine you a new $50. Sir, so that says 90. That's okay. I don't expect that. I know. Okay. Sometimes we just do it. Sometimes. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Sure. Try all the time. How much do I owe you? This is a going away present. Well, thank you. You bet. And it's been that way since the beginning. This is the only place I go. Now Lou Boyer. I'm really going to miss him. Needs a new jeweler. I have no idea. An Art Smith's loyalist. A long, long time ago. Time now for a change. Worked with Simmons. Oh, good. But they've all been in business a long time, and they'll do yeah. a good job. Mm -hmm. Locals know no one can replace the ring. Thank you. Goodbye. On Vista. No one can replace Rick. Yeah, this is one I designed. Because whoever said love is blind never took a look at five decades of excellence. And it's the people that I'm going to miss. This is a special time for them. The big ring sign out front is going to be preserved at Signs of Our Time. It's a local group that keeps these Boise landmarks alive, typically those signs, hence the name. And for Rick and his wife, they say they're gonna travel a little bit, Brian. Their yep. last day is yep. the 29th. It's a leap year. I learned that today. You, you did? Um, but their grandson plays baseball at BYU. Okay. So they go to the BYU games, but then they gotta go back because this guy works seven days a week. Mm. So now they can stay, hang out with the other grandparents and enjoy being a grandfather and a grandmother. They're gonna get to know I-84 and I-50. I was wondering what was gonna happen to that big ring, because you drive by it, you see it. If you've been here for a while, you've noticed mm -hmm. it. You probably don't notice it these days, but you're gonna notice when it's gone. I, I saw it before, but I never thought to go in there. So. Exactly. And now I, I was almost too late. I got in the last month. All right. Thanks, Andrew. That was great.
Some beautiful views there. And looking at this beautiful view in the some central mountain areas, we started out with clouds and a little bit of, bit of blue sky peeking through. But as we went through some of those afternoon hours, we saw the clouds increase and snow showers start to filter through. And so that's the case right now where we're seeing some light snow at the highest elevations over in Sun Valley. And as we go through the next 24 hours or so, we will be talking about more snow, but at all elevations. So as we look through what we're expecting for the weekend, chronologically, here's what we'll be seeing. Widespread snow starting tomorrow morning. Good news is that it's expected to be quite light. Valley locations are looking about a half inch. Even the mountains are expecting roughly half inch to one inch. And then in the afternoon hours after the snow clears, we're expecting some breezy conditions to develop. And then looking at the weekend, we're looking at more sunshine finally starting to make an appearance. It's been a while since I've been able to say that. So now taking a look at some of the details more in depth, you can see just where those totals are expected to be higher in the mountains. And again, valley locations roughly half an inch. Some places could see less than that. So this is all being fueled by a low pressure center. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we see some isolated areas pick up higher totals because that low pressure gives lots of energy to the atmosphere. And so as we go through the timing of this, you'll see some of those showers lingering in valley locations tonight as that low pressure continues to track to the east. Tomorrow mornings where we start to see that snow start to filter through starting from the west heading to the east. And you can see that going to as it follows that path towards the east, some of that snow makes it towards the Twin Falls area by about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Some of those snow showers will linger in the central mountains before we really see things clear out. And then we'll be talking about less clouds and more sunshine. You can see again that low pressure center continuing to track to the east, making the way for more sunshine in our weekend view. <music> If you checked your watch, maybe your phone or calendar, you probably noticed that today's one of those days we can consider so Idaho because it's 208, February 8th, 208. Get it? A day we feel kind of like a holiday here on the show. Holiday we also share with National Kite Flying Day, National Boy Scouts Day. It's also National Giving Hearts Day. And fittingly, it is also Iowa Day. Not Idaho, but Iowa Day. In the Julian cal calendar for the year 208, that, was, that day was, when they say back in the day, they're talking about Monday. That was the day on 208 day. And from now, or 208 days from now, it's going to be September 3rd, or 903. I guess, I don't, what does that mean? Nothing. It means nothing. Just like 208 day. Doesn't have a whole lot of meaning to it, other than we like to celebrate it sometimes. For all who celebrate. <laughs>
bunch of comments today, a lot of them about cannibalism. We'll get to those right now. How about this? So glad legislators have so much time, on wa time to waste on unimportant issues such as cannibalism. Taxpayers of Idaho sure are getting their money's worth, says Paul in Boise. Leave it to Blanchard, Idaho's finest, to warn us Idahoans about the coming cannibalism apocalypse. Thanks, Heather, says Mike. Idaho politics, it must be true. I Googled it. Wow, these are scary times, says Char. Mark Peterson says, what next, Heather Scott? Outlaw Chianti and fava beans? Got to like the cannibalism jokes for this story, too. Here's another one. What's the problem? Heather Scott's bill is unusual for today's Republican Party. Pretty much the meat of the party since 2015. We'll take all the puns you got, Rob. Bring them on. Anyone want to bet the new GOP majority leader will be someone who votes with the IFF over 85% of the time, says Steve. We'll see what happens with that on Monday and that, uh, how that will play out. Story about Heather Scott and cannibalism really left a bad taste in my mouth. Says Pat. Again, more puns. Love it. I can't tell you how many times I've been to Art Smith's Jewelry and they have charged me absolutely nothing for things, says Joe Ford. That's what Andrew told us today. Every customer that came in while he was there talking to Rick either didn't charge him at all or really discounted prices today. So that's just kind of the guy he is, which is why people like Larry say this. The heart and soul of our economy are the Art Smith Jewelries of the world. Thank you for helping our community for all these years. They will be missed. You got until the end of the month. If you want to go visit Rick and his wife before they head out, enjoy some retirement. We'll see you tomorrow.